राहुल वलेकर प्रेसिडेंट एंड मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर ऑफ इंडियन एनर्जी स्टोरेज अलायंस जॉइंस अस ना एंड व्हाट वी वुड बी डिस्कसिंग इज दैट हाउ कस्टमाइज एनर्जी सॉल्यूशंस वुड बी चेंजिंग एज इंडिया इज माइग्रेटिंग फ्रॉम आइस टू ईवी एज द बैटरी डिमांड विल चेंज पंप स्टोरेज इज समथिंग व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी इन द फ्यूचर थर्मल वर्सेस रिन्यूएबल देयर आर लॉट ऑफ इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग्स व्हिच इज एसेंशियली हैपनिंग इन द बैटरी स्टोरेज आई एम जस्ट गिविंग अ कॉन्टेक्स्ट फॉर अ व्यूअर्स हियर सेकंड विद इन बैटरी द टेक्नोलॉजी इज आल्सो चेंजिंग यू नो फ्रॉम the way semiconductors were uh, uh, how will battery cells were made versus how future battery cells were made india is still not atmanirbhar when it comes to the energy storage and when it comes to the entire ev chain and that's largely because in construction of a battery lot of lithium and lot of rare materials are used which is where we don't have access to because in india some of these rare materials have just been in a sense discovered and the real mining has not so at a time when the energy shifts are migrating energy need is migrating new technology is on our way what would be the dominant uh, battery storage solution so rahul i think the introduction itself was a question i'm going to start with something what uh, bill gates said that you should markets always overestimate the rate of change in the short term and underestimate in the long term do you think the excitement in the entire battery storage industry slightly overhyped very much uh, for bringing this uh, topic up uh, in fact i feel that we are just at a cusp of a major revolution and the excitement right now it is there in fact there is still early stage of the excitement right if you see in last 5 years uh, around the globe the manufacturing capacity has scaled up from under 500 gigawatt hour to more than 2000 gigawatt hour and in india we are just starting of on that pathway uh, we are expecting around 50 gigawatt hour of manufacturing capacity to come online uh, between now and 2027 and then it's it, it could scale up uh, to 150 gigawatt hour by 2030 and 500 plus gigawatt hour in 2035 so i feel with the applications for renewable energy applications for behind the meter that is customer sited uh, applications as well as for the e mobility when you combine all these three i think india is poised to become one of the largest markets in the top 3 markets globally and the manufacturing is now starting to catch up with the uh, acc pli and other enabling frameworks which are created by indian government so i think the uh, excitement is appropriate and in fact we will see lot more excitement in the next 2 years question is that there are a set of incumbents let's say an exite or an amara raja they understand the technology they have championed the migration how the acid lead battery has moved i remember 20 years ago the technology of acid lead itself was different now you getting car batteries which are which you don't have to change for 3 years which maintenance free you know as a child i remember every 6 months a bottle khol kar ke acid dete the those days are gone so who will dominate who will dominate this entire migration from acid lead battery to the ev batteries so again right now since the market is going to be so wide, and market is expanding so much uh, i think there is a opportunity for multiple players to play in this ecosystem uh, there are global giants uh, such as lg samsung uh, some of the chinese leaders like catl byd uh, japanese companies like nasonic are already there uh, but then indian companies led by uh, ola reliance uh, excide uh, amar raja as well as some of the new uh, companies coming up like godi energy are also looking at setting up manufacturing and the pace at which the market is expected to grow uh, the market can accommodate multiple uh, technologies right now lot of focus is on the lithium ion battery technologies within lithium ion there are almost 7 to 8 different varieties of lithium ion batteries so it is not just one single type of technology uh, and plus there is a work happening on next generation technologies such as sodium ion metal air battery or uh, many other uh, permutation combinations between anode and cathode also tried out uh, so i think all of these companies have a, a great opportunity in front of them uh, it depends on how much money they can raise how much money they can invest how fast they can build their r&d as well as how they can perfect the manufacturing uh, because the manufacturing for lithium ion batteries is a very specialized process it requires lot of fine tuning and lot of know how in terms of the operational side uh, so a lot of work is still ahead of us but right now the opportunity is there for Uh, any company who wants to take a lead uh, 
Now let's talk about the disruptors. Since this is a new technology, there are a lot of disruptors. P funding is easy. Uh, and there are some disruptors which I'm sure will make it big. But for an investor and for our viewer, because we are stock market related channel, if you really have to place your bets that, okay, the bet could be that EV is coming, change will happen in terms of technology, but who will be the winner? Who has the right to win? The disruptors or the current firms? So right now, if you see India, almost every company who is entering the lithium ion space is a disruptor, right? India did not have that ecosystem, uh, which uh, for uh, just even say two years back, if you see, uh, there was a uh, new ecosystem available for lithium ion batteries. So the way I would say is India, together with all these companies is a disruptor in a global space. Traditionally, China was being seen as a only manufacturing hub. In last five years, Europe and US are trying to set up their own uh, domestic manufacturing. But now India as a new emerging player uh, is coming up and it can disrupt actually the global uh, supply chain. And India has the opportunity to become a hub. So I would say that as an investor, you should look at multiple Indian companies who have the appetite have the capabilities uh, to uh, scale up the manufacturing because India's advantage is India has a huge domestic market unlike many of the other countries where some of the manufacturing is being set up they have limited local market where in India the market between now to 2030 is expected to be more than 500 gigawatt hour cumulatively or in 2030 the domestic market itself could be 150 to 200 gigawatt hour uh, of annual capacity requirement so there is a lot of positives are happening and as a advisor investors i would say that this sector is sector which is a sunrise sector and uh, as long as you are picking the right companies uh, multiple uh, opportunities will exist for investors and it is not only about just cell manufacturing as well one of the key areas where as the india energy storage alliance we are working on is creating the complete supply chain, not just for the domestic market, but also for the global industry. And we think that the supply chain for gigafactories could be actually three to five times bigger market in India uh, as a manufacturing base uh, than as compared to even gigafactories. So uh, investors should look at not just in terms of the cell manufacturing companies, but they should look at the complete uh, value chain of the advanced uh, battery manufacturing and look at companies who are uh, uh, poised to become a global supplier in this space. So if I have to ask Rahul the investor who understands the battery technology, understands the supply chain, if you have to bet on one company as an investor based on your understanding, which is one company you work on? It's not a stock tip, but your understanding of technology and everything. So again, I would say there are multiple companies, so I'm not trying to duck the question. I really believe that there are multiple opportunities. It is like the IT sector, right? It was not about just picking up Infosys or TCS and betting on one. India in late 90s, in early 2000s, emerged as a global player for IT services. And there are multiple companies in which investors have made huge money, right? So I see the clean energy transition is the same uh, uh, transition right now uh, with the thought leadership and commitment shown by Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji. India is taking steps which still just three, four years back, no one in the world had and fueled by this positive policy dynamics and the conviction of now the Indian industry that yes, India can also become a manufacturing hub. We are going to see a lot of uh, uh, exciting opportunities in this space. All right. Uh, that's an interesting perspective. Thanks so much for joining in and telling us a little bit more about the potential that India has to really become one of the top three global EV players and uh, what uh, the opportunities are as well.